FilmScore is one of the most popular websites to get football data. And if you've seen my previous video on SofaScore and scraping data from SofaScore, you know that it used to be a very simple and easy way to just gather data via their API. Well, that is no more because they have changed a couple of things in their API. So I'm making this updated video to show how we can still extract that data even though we have to work a couple of workarounds and do a little bit of hacky things to actually extract that data. So SofaScore, just a brief summary of what we do to get data from SofaScore. They have all of this data on their page, but they load most of it through APIs by calling and fetching that data from API. So the way to actually see what APIs are being extracted, if you right click and then you come down to inspect if you're in Google Chrome, okay? And then you come over here and you change this to the network tab. Then you can start to see all of the APIs that are being loaded. So I like to click on this fetch slash XHR. And then you can start to scroll through all of these. You can kind of click around on the pages. So if we go to the statistics page, you can see they have this shot map here. So what SofaScore has been doing is they have been playing around with their API. I don't know if they've been seeing a lot of people scraping it or if they've just been changing how they're using their data. But basically in an effort to make it more difficult, whether this is intentional or in unintentional, is they have started to do something where they randomize the data that is returned from the actual API. You probably need some sort of token or you need to know just some sort of internal tool to actually just hit the API through straight Python code. So what we are going to do is we are going to use something called Selenium, which allows us to mimic a Chrome browser. And then we are going to use that Selenium Chrome browser to actually read these network responses and these APIs that are being loaded in the page. So that's how we're going to get around this for now. And this should be a good way to both learn how Selenium works and as well learn how to kind of solve problems with web scraping. So to do this, we need to install a couple of packages. So come over to a terminal or a command prompt, depending on what type of OS or computer you are running. And then we're just going to install two packages that we're going to need. So the first one is going to be Selenium. And if you say pip install Selenium, okay, and then two equal signs, and we're going to be using 4.20.0, okay? And if you already have it, it'll just say, you know, successfully installed or like you already have it, essentially like requirement already satisfied, if you already have everything. Otherwise, it will go ahead and install that for you. The other one that we need to install is called Web Driver Manager. And this is going to allow us to actually run the Chrome browser. So if you say pip install, okay, Web Driver dash manager, and then we'll say is equal to 4.0.1, like that. So this will install basically the same thing if you already have it installed. And then you need to make sure that you have Chrome installed as well, and otherwise it won't work. And then the next thing, you don't necessarily need to do this, but there are things called Chrome drivers, which I usually just download just in case. This allows you to run Chrome and it's called Chromium, to be able to run Selenium basically on your desktop through Python code. So if you come over here and you, I'll put this link in there, you go to chromedriver.chromium.org, you go to this JSON endpoints right here, and then you just find the version of Chrome you're running, so 124.0, you know, I think that's their most recent one. And then they have the different uh, ways that you can download those files depending on what system you are running. So I'm running a Mac ARM, and so I would download this one right here, okay? But if I had a Windows uh, Bit64, I would download this one. If I was on Linux, I would download that one, okay? So download that if you need to. You most likely won't need to, but just in case, you know, it's a good thing to do. And then what we're going to be doing is we are going to be scraping this page right here. So this is a game from a couple of weeks ago. It's when Messi had five assists in a single game. So we're just going to be scraping this page. And what we're going to be extracting is we are going to be just extracting this shot map. So let's hop over into a Jupyter Notebook. And if you come here, let's open up our Jupyter Notebook. And then we're just going to start by importing our packages. 
So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just so you can see. And so the first one we're going to import is going to be JSON. So we'll say import JSON. And then we'll say from Selenium, okay, import web driver. And we'll say from Selenium dot web driver dot chrome dot service import service as chrome service like that and then we'll say from web driver underscore manager dot chrome import chrome driver manager okay so go ahead and run that and that is why we needed to pip install those packages because we need this selenium package and we need this web driver manager package so then to actually boot up and start our web driver we need to set a couple of settings and then we can go ahead and we can create our chrome instance for testing and web scraping so if we say options equal web driver dot chrome options like that and then we'll say options dot set underscore capability okay and then this one, we need to type it a little bit weird, but it's gonna be G-O-O-G, so Google, and then logging prefs with a capital P in the middle, and then close that, and then a comma, and then inside a dictionary, we need to say performance is the key, and then the value is all capitalized. And then we'll do the second one, browser, browser all as well okay and then close that dictionary off and then close off the parentheses so now we need to actually create the web driver and we use this a combination of both selenium and this web driver manager so what web driver manager does for us is it actually is going to download the necessary chromium that we need so it's going to download this based on what we what version of chrome we have okay so we'll go ahead and come in here so to do this we just say driver equals web driver dot chrome okay and then we'll say service equals chrome service and then chrome driver manager and then in parentheses dot install with more parentheses and then a comma and then say options equals options like this. So what we do now is we just run this and it's gonna do this, it's gonna kinda take a second to actually go and install and then you should have a new window of Chrome pop up. So this is your automated Chrome. You can tell because it says Chrome is being controlled by automated test software when you first load it. So that means we can now use Python to go ahead and manipulate this browser, go to different pages, and it's really the power of Selenium and using it for automated web scraping. So now that we have that set up, we need to tell Selenium which page we actually want to go to. So come back to this inter miami versus new york red bulls and we are going to essentially grab this url right here okay so grab this url and so the way sophiscore works is they use this match id right here to tell it which page and which api should be being called to load the data so as you can see this is the 11911622 if we look at this shot map Right here we have on this headers tab, it has sofascore.com API and then that 11911622. So that is the match ID which tells it to go get the data for that specific match, okay? So if we come back over to our Jupyter Notebook, go ahead and copy this URL and then we're going to tell it which page to go to. So the first thing we wanna do is tell it basically do not load a page longer than a couple of seconds because there are pages which will load JavaScript and it just causes like an infinite loop of loading. We don't want that to happen. So we'll say driver dot set underscore page underscore load underscore timeout. And we'll just say 10, so 10 seconds. And then we're just gonna say try, okay? And we'll say driver dot get, and then in parentheses and a quote, put that tap, put that URL close it and then say accept and then pass and then we'll say driver dot execute underscore script 
and then in quotes say window dot scroll two and then in parentheses zero comma document dot body dot scroll height parentheses with a um semicolon and then finish it off with the actual quote and a parenthesis. So what this is going to do is this is right here going to go to that URL. It's going to tell our Selenium to actually go to that URL and then it's going to execute a script which is going to scroll all the way to the bottom which is going to allow us to load all of the APIs on the page because some of them you do need to scroll to actually get those APIs to be called. And so we're going to use this execute script to run a little snippet of JavaScript to scroll our browser essentially to the end of the page. So now if you run this, we can come over and we can kind of see what happens. It loads and then it scrolls all the way down to the bottom of the page. So now we're just going to use some Python code to extract all of these network responses over here and just parse out this shot map one. So to do this, we are just going to say logs underscore raw equals driver dot get underscore log and then performance. OK. So if we run that, that's going to give us all of those network responses. Essentially, it's going to get all of the APIs that are being called. And then we can look at all these if we say logs equals bracket JSON dot loads. OK, and then LR bracket message and then a parenthesis and then another bracket with message. OK, and then for LR in logs underscore raw. So this is starting to parse these logs raw. If you want to kind of get into the nitty gritty of what is in those logs raw, it's not very beautiful. And I mean, you can go look at it if you want. You just say print logs raw. You can see it. So now we have all of our logs. So these are all dictionaries. We can look at the first one. So we say logs bracket zero. So they're all basically going to have what is being loaded through those network responses in those APIs. So now we're just going to loop over every single one and find our actual shop map API. So if we say four X in logs, okay, if shop map in x params okay dot get headers comma empty curly braces and then dot get colon path and then an empty string we want to print just that same thing so you can copy this x params get headers thing right here and then close that off. And then we need to say break at the end, okay? Because we're going to use the X value when it actually does find that shot map API. So now, just kind of so we can tell what's going on here, basically we are looping through every network response. So that is what our log is. It is all the network responses. And we're saying if shot map is in the params, and then we're using this dot git, which is a safe git which means that we are basically looking for headers in this dictionary. And if it is not in there, it is going to get and just return an empty dictionary so that we can continue to try and fetch this path. And if path is not in that dictionary, then it will return an empty string. Otherwise it will return the value of path. Okay. So that's kind of how a get works. It's just kind of like a safe way for us to actually get that. So if we run that, you can see that the API comes back and there is our endpoint, okay? And our X value, we basically have stopped it on that endpoint. So this is our X right here. So it has a bunch of information about that network response and it has all of the different cookies, different headers, it has different parameters that we can use. So now we're going to run some code to actually extract that data out of our Selenium browser and put it into our Python code. So to do this, we'll just say shot map equals JSON dot loads. Okay. And then driver dot execute underscore CDP underscore CMD. Okay. 
and then we're going to say network dot get response with a capital R body and then put a comma and then the in curly brace this one a dictionary we need to say request ID and that's going to be our key and then our value is going to be X params request ID okay and then curly braces and then do a, another parenthesis so it lines up right here and then you need to say in brackets body like that and then close that off okay so this is going to load all the data in and then to actually get the shot map it is nested one more time so say shot map so now that has ran so let's look at our actual shot map so now we have the actual shot map data from that sofa score api and just to confirm that they are not randomizing the data on this one we can go look at the expected goals of this emil forsberg shot was 0.78 because it was a penalty in the 97th minute it says that his location right here player coordinates 11.550 let's go verify that that actually was the case so if we come in here shot map so we have player coordinates 11 11.550 expected goals are 0.78 so that is how we can extract data from sofa score and actually get around their mechanisms that they've tried to implement for blocking and this basically allows us to continue to use sofa score which is a great website for scraping and it allows us to kind of practice extracting data from apis and collecting really good uh, data as well that we can use for our own analysis so that is it for this video this is a great video and a great way to get started with scraping if you do want to learn how to scrape more metadata then go ahead and watch this video here which is learning how to scrape transfer market using some more of these unconventional methods to really bolster out your web scraping skills